afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another um, segment of Condo Insider that we do on uh, weekly. And today, um, and I want I also want to extend our um, happy holidays to everybody. Hope everyone's going to be safe over the holidays. Um, I want to introduce my guest today. His name is Bobby. He is with Pacific Drain Servicing Services. He's going to tell us the importance of maintaining our sewer drains, whether you're in a condo, whether you're in a townhouse, or even a single family. It has to be, it should always be maintained at least yearly to avoid those surprise backups. So let me introduce Bobby. So um, Bobby, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in this industry. Okay, my name is Robert Perkins. Everybody calls me Bobby. Uh, I got introduced to this by a friend of mine uh, years ago. I've been doing this since I was 13, 14 years old. And now I'm 53 and I have my own company. Uh, I've been in my company for 16 years, worked for several different companies. And I just wanted to do something on my own to pursue my career. So um, what, what should, like, like, there's kind of like a little bit of difference between condos and townhouses and then your single family. So mm -hmm. let's start off with a high rise condo. Um, how do you normally go about doing um, those sewer problems? Because it's not just the ones on the ground with the little things that you put, right? If you do a condo, yeah. you go from the top down. So we actually go from the bottom up when we do our preventive maintenances, especially if we're doing like a kitchen stack for a high rise building, because uh, people realize that what, what happens with high rises is there's a lot of grease that's being let down. Soap is actually grease, which people don't realize, and they don't run enough water, hot water to flush the system. So a uh, high rise actually is considered worse than a restaurant with the grease. They have about, 50 times more than what a restaurant would have in their lines. So we come in and we either say like a 20 story building, we'll go from like the fifth floor, 10th floor, 15th floor, 20th floor, go from each stack, every five floors and clean the lines all the way down and flush it when we're done. Uh, that's to help break up the grease that's built up in the pipes. But also people don't realize is grease buildup actually turns to acid and eats the pipes from the inside out. Wow, I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, so that's why a lot of these buildings are having leakage is because the pipes are rotting. Not only that, Drano, liquid plumber, is a no-no for those drains. They do cause a lot of problems for the building itself. So a lot of my high-rise buildings, they have notes posted that do not use Drano or liquid plumber. Wow. So um, <clears throat> the grease. So that, that usually is one big common um, thing that could clog drains. So what should be the proper way to actually like baking grease? Um, what should be the proper way to dispose of grease other than putting it down the drain? Uh, basically put it in like a little, little mayonnaise jar or any type of jelly jars that are empty. Put it in a freezer, throw it away. Or a lot of people will actually just wipe it off the pan and dump it in a rubbish can or dump it in the yard but that's preference on people okay um i know at one time city mail used to sell um it looked like a cardboard egg carton mm -hmm. i think if i remember right you pour the grease in i mean like i save my cardboard egg cartons and that's where usually i dump the grease or mm -hmm. in the trash can full of newspaper yeah people do that today but a lot of people don't want to go out and buy that little product just to put grease in so cartons. they decide Take your eight cartons. <laughs> yeah. So they decide they're gonna dump it down the sink, and in return, they don't run enough hot water. We don't we don't tell people to do it, but people do do it, and if they are gonna do it, they need to back it up with a lot of hot water to flow it through the system. I'm surprised to hear that even um, dish soap is a cause of some clogs, like like dish, dish soap, dog. shampoo, body wash, conditioner. Everything that is soap-wise is made with grease. As they say, grease cuts grease. Oh, oh wow, that's really, that's really interesting. So I recommend to my customers, even like they're, if they're washing dishes at the end of the night, let the hot water run extra two to three minutes when you're done washing dishes to make sure you flush all that stuff out of your system and into the big sewer line. Wow, wow. 
what is one of your worst situations that, that you can remember that's, that you've ever incurred that could have been prevented? <clears throat> uh, pretty much a lot of my jobs are the worst, <laughs> especially with a disposal. And people will constantly dump Thanksgiving dinners, leftovers, and with the water saver flushes, I mean, the water saver sinks, what they will do is not run enough hot water through the system. So when they're running a disposal, it plugs up and it plugs up in their line. And then when they clear their line, it goes into the riser of the high rise and it clogs below someone's unit, which is called a riser. And then that unit below starts to overflow. Say they're on the fifth floor and you got a 25 story building. Now you got 20 floors of water from the kitchen sink coming up in your unit. Same with like the bathroom, the bathroom sinks, the toilet, the bathtubs, same scenario. Hair builds up, riser gets clogged, and it backs up and overflows into units. Um, I've always been told like coffee grounds, um, eggshells, um, those are kind of like the worst because I remember one time my, the coffee grounds clogged my dishwasher line. So now I don't do that anymore. Um, and... Um, was it like even um, Thanksgiving? Usually, some people say is the worst plumber, plumber's day. Like the um, potato skins and all that stuff, they throw it down the garbage disposal and it gets all plumbed up. Honestly, for me, for a drain cleaning company, every day is the worst day. <laughs> it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving or a holiday. It's just people in preference doing stuff they shouldn't be doing with the sinks or the toilets. So, what should Same go thing. down to a garbage disposal? Basically, if you're gonna, you can put pretty much everything down the disposal but you need to back it up with a lot of water. So if you got a faucet that's producing a little bit of water, that's not gonna help you. You need something that has a more high volume mm -hmm. or what you do is you put the food in the disposal, cover the, cover the disposal with the cap, fill up your sink maybe about one third of the way, pull the cover, hit the switch for the disposal, and then everything will flow freely through it, but keep the water on as, as much as possible. Um, that way you get a lot of head pressure pushing all the stuff out of your sort of out of your line into the sewer line. Okay, so that's high rises. And then you have your um, townhouses, like some of them are only like two or three, maybe four stories, would be the same principle. Same principle, same concept, just the same type of situations. Um, and then single family homes. Same. So baby, baby, everybody, everybody should be doing it at least once a year. Once a year for the kitchen sinks is what we highly recommend. Okay, what about the sewer cleanouts? What's sewer cleanouts, it's two to three years, all depends what they want. Um, if they have a big household, old sewer plumbing, then we would recommend once a year. If it's a newly built house, like in the 80s up with the ABS pipes or PVC pipes, then it's not too bad because ABS is a closed core versus cast iron being an open core. So everything sits inside a cast iron and then builds and builds and builds. Cast iron, cast iron is one of the worst ones as far as grease because the grease adheres to the pipe and then starts to build. ABS or PVC, because it's a closed sealed pipe, a lot of times it just slips right through, but it can still get clogged up by putting uh, wipes, toilet, heavy toilet paper, um, sanitary napkins, stuff that should not be flushed, that says flushable should not be flushed. Yeah, because our um, our um, metal sewer pipes, they they rust from the inside out, so they could be some rust particles that are just kind of like sticking to each other, <laughs> and then it's gonna catch up, catch that flow of toilet paper, and it's gonna build and build and build, and um, eventually you're gonna get end up with a clog, right? Yeah. So like even like for the older <clears throat> homes, we do descaling of the sewer lines, where what happens is over a period of time valleys build up in the pipe because of the rust and all the debris and it gets stuck to the pipe and then it starts building and building so we go in we clean out the pipe from all the debris we use a camera to verify everything is cut up and then we back it up with a jetter and we pull everything out of the pipe it makes it almost like new but not brand new so stuff does not get hung up in the pipe so when you descale it it's just is it kind of the machine does it kind of look like um you know when they clear the drain the um this, it's the same principle as clearing a drain, but what you do is you're going to use a, a, a blade that is called for for it, or nowadays they have a chain, and that it spins around and breaks up all the debris. 
that way and also while we're doing that we're viewing the line to see if there's any cracks or um troughs in the drain which is caused by wear and tear of the pipe at the bottom where the base of the pipe just disintegrates and disappears also it's kind of literally sitting in dirt at that point yeah oh then what that you guys got to take it out and replace it uh, that's when we bring in another company to replace the pipe. Oh, it sounds expensive. Um, my other thing is, um, <clears throat> so you do also the sewer cleanouts that need to be done. Um, and then while you do that, do you do, um, a, you send down a camera to make sure everything is clear? Um, tree roots? Upon so request. Oh, upon request. Cool. Okay. Upon request, yeah, like if we're doing a preventive maintenance and want the, they want the camera added, then we'll do it. Uh, most times, it's just uh, go in, clear out the lines, make sure everything is good. But if some buildings specifically want the camera to check the conditions of the pipe, so okay. we also do that as well. So what would you recommend for some people that, because, um, you know, there's all these different kinds of um, companies now that are selling... Um, like repiping? Mm -hmm. No. Um, and I guess they're from the picture, and I'm only just going from the pictures that I see, is that they, they put in like a layer that surrounds the inside of the piping. So they put a liner in the pipe. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that work when you're also like, wouldn't that kind of be harmful if you're snaking the pipe or even, you know, trying to clean it? I mean, yeah, well, there's a difference with lining and a regular. So if they're going to line a pipe, you cannot use a cable with a blade on it to clean that line because there's a liner inside. It's a fiberglass liner. Um, our company, we don't do that. Um, for me, I like to have things dug up and replaced. But in certain situations, um, people don't want to do it or it's, it's too, too much for them. So what they want to do is have the pipe line. In cases like that, they need to let the people who will come out to do the drain lines know that they have a liner in there because we won't know and what ends up happening is the blade will catch the liner and we'll end up breaking the liner yeah i can imagine that being messy. so then if they have a liner then how would they clear a drain you'd have to use the jetter oh um, the, the hydro jetter yeah it's a high pressure it's a high pressure jetter it's got nozzles on the end that has forward and reverse penetrating so that you can clear out the line that also helps to break up tree roots grease debris that's built up in the pipe, food. Um, uh, we have problems with kitchen sinks in stacks where a cable will go through the, the break the blockage and we won't be able to clear it. So now we have to go in with the mini jetter, which shoots 1800 to 2500 PSI. And that will actually help you to penetrate and break it out and get it out of the way. So like um, there's a, a word of caution for a lot of people. Like if they constantly, I mean, if they have more than I would say one or two blockages a year, they've got a problem. Yeah. A snake is not is only a temporary fix because I remember once someone was telling me that every once in a while their um, the sewer would back up, and so they would call like either rotor rooter or whoever they can get a hold of, and mm -hmm. um, they would clear it. But then, like maybe a year later, or you know, sometime later, it would happen again. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they would do the same thing, um, but. Everybody needs to be aware of that. Sometimes that's only a temporary fix. It's only a band-aid fix. They really need to spend that money to send that camera down because it shouldn't be happening that often. Sometimes if it happens once a year, it's not a problem because things build up. So now if you're getting a problem like every two, three months, then you definitely recommend using the camera. A lot of people who buy homes, uh, we recommend that they put the camera in to check the condition of the pipe before they buy. Yeah. Because you don't want to buy a home not knowing, what, not knowing what it looks like inside the lines. Go ahead and do all your renovations and you find out your sewer line is no good. Right, right. You know, so the camera is a key thing in, in our job. Um, I recommend that to a lot of places. And especially if you're having problems with your sewer line every two to three months, every four months. Um, a lot of it is caused by just the toilet paper itself. If the toilet paper is too thick with the water saver toilets today and you have cast iron pipes, it doesn't have enough head pressure to push the paper all the way out through into the, the main sewer line. 
Yeah, this one condo, because they, you know, they finally set the camera down, and what happened was the pipe was was clogged, but there was only enough of a hole. Right, a pinhole. Yeah, and so so they finally figured out, and so they actually now at least pinpointed the real problem and actually mm -hmm. set something down to actually clean out that, you know, so that now the hole is the way it's supposed to be, you know? So, yeah. Um, so if you have continuous block, uh, blockages, um, yes. To me, even once a year sometimes might be too much, but still, um, if it's happening too frequently, out of, out of, out to me, out of a um, for cautionary purposes, so you don't have that sewer backing up into your house, um, mm -hmm. it pays that little extra money just to send the camera down, just to double check yeah. that you don't have. Well, peace of mind is always good by running the camera, so that they know that okay, my pipe is clear, my pipe is clear. There's nothing wrong with my pipe. Okay, now it's something that we're doing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the paper's too thick. A lot of people like when they use the toilet, they like to roll the toilet paper on their hands. And they don't realize that they're creating a massive ball of toilet paper that will not break up because it's too thick. And if you have a, a water saver toilet, you're actually gonna flush the toilet. It'll, it'll plug up in your toilet or it's gonna go downstream on a turn and get stuck. Now, the next time somebody uses the bathroom, same scenario, starts starts building a dam before it finally backs up. Let's talk about toilet paper. So um, I know a friend of mine at her house, the plumber told them they cannot, they can only use a certain brand. So let's talk about your experiences with toilet papers. Um, different types of toilet papers are harmful to your system because it will not break up. Uh, for one thing, it's like Charmin, Angel Soft. The papers are too thick, especially with a water saver toilet. Um, for me, I use Kirkland or Marathon. I'm not too sure about the, the Sam's Club brand, but for my side, I tell them either the, Char the uh, Kirkland or the Marathon brand. I've done tests where I stick, take the paper, fold it in half, and put it underneath the faucet, and it breaks up within one second. That's something that you want to use. Now, if you fold your toilet paper in half, and you put it on your underneath your faucet and it doesn't break like two, three, four seconds, that's a problem because it will not break up fast enough in your sewer line to be flushed through and it just sits in your pipe. So you want the toilet paper that has the best biodegradable abilities. Yeah, right? something that breaks up better because of the situation with the water saver toilets, that is a big problem. So most of the toilets you get now, are they all water saver? <laughs> Yes. Some that are not. They're all water saver. All toilets are water saver. And I now thought... certain toilets will, this is your tank, you'll get that much of water. So that much of water versus the old style, that much head pressure, good. This much head pressure, not too good on a house that's old. Um, big house, long sewer line, a lot of turns. So you want something that's actually going to push it through. So some places we tell them flush twice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, cause I was at Lowe's recently and I saw, um, this one toilet that caught my eye. It has an overflow. So there's poop that's up and near the top where if it overflows, it goes into there. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. So you don't end up with a flood in your house. You know? Yeah. So, but, um, and, and I think that one, um, someone told me that when they flush it, it it's loud. <laughs> like, oh, it might wake everybody up in the condo. <laughs> They're going to know when to turn the bathroom. <laughs> that's, that's the pressure assist toilet. It's a good toilet. I have those in my home as well. Um, but you still can clog it up. Oh, yeah. If you're not careful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bottom line is watch what you throw down those drains. Green yes. those seats. Make sure you're really thoroughly rinsing out your sink after you're done washing dishes. Toilet paper, take note of your toilet papers and what you throw down those toilets. Because I know I read a, um, um, something for dummies. Uh, um, it was what you don't throw down the toilet for dummies. And there was a whole list. No cigarette butts, no dental floss, Q-tips, um, sanitary stuff, wipes, especially because some of those wipes are almost like a, like a, like a cloth, you know? Yeah, it stuff. is a cloth. And, um, and they're kind of, they're kind of, I want to say more like polyester. Yes. They have polyester feel to it. Um, dryer sheets, because that definitely will not break up. Um, because it will snag in the pipe as well. Yeah. So if you've got a metal pipe and there's a, there's a little nick in it, it'll just stick right there. Yes. 
um, and watch what you throw down the garbage disposal. I mean, I know um, I've always been told no, no eggs, no eggshells, so you're at, I mean, um, coffee grinds. Um, and besides eggshells, you can recycle them into your, into your yards. It's a um, right. calcium. So um, once I learned that, actually, I, feed them, I put them on my, on my orchids and they actually do a lot better. <laughs> right. So we also have a product that's called Bio One. It's a live organic waste eater. It's approved by the EPA. It's eco-friendly. Um, if they want to go, they can go to our website at pacificdrainservice.com and it will be on my website. So we do that for a lot of buildings, restaurants, where once a month we put in two to four ounces. So it's basically set it and forget it. You don't have to run water. Um, just dump it in and just let it do its thing. Dump it into every drain? You can dump it into your kitchen sink, your bathroom sink your bathtub, your washer drain. Um, there's a couple buildings here that use it. Uh, one is Punahou Cliffs. One is uh, Discovery Bay, uh, 1448 Young Street. They also use it. Um, I do have it at the Waimalo Shopping Center in Ohana Barbecue, and as well as Kabuki's Restaurant. And that has substantially lowered their blockages. So it's something that people can look into it. It's not something that we push on people, but it's a product that we have. And I've been using that for about 25 years. So what does it, what does it contain in there? Just enzyme stuff that will get rid of stuff? Yeah. So the MSDS sheets, everything would be on my website. And that would explain everything, what it's about. It's called One Biotechnology. That is their website. And they can feel free to Google that and they can look that up as well. Okay, cool. So um, we're kind of nearing the end. Is there any other um, tips and tricks that you want to give to some of our um, condo board members or even our um, resident managers, general managers, um, on maintaining their, the, their drains and what, you know, what they um, should do to protect um, their properties? Um, the best thing to do is preventive maintenance. Um, always run a lot of hot water especially if you're putting soap and grease down your sinks, um, shaving in your bathroom, washing your hands, washing your face in your bathroom sink, same thing, run a lot of hot water. Um, that stuff is key to help keep the drain flowing properly. And as we talked about, no sanitary napkins, no wipes, no baby wipes. Um, what else? All those kinds of things will back your problems and give you a lot of headaches. Yeah, because I remember cigarette, cigarette butts don't biodegrade. They just, I mean, even if you throw them in the yard, I mean, people are like always screaming because they don't biodegrade, you know, they just stay yeah. intact, you know. So I can I can imagine that being just a buildup alone. So um, are you, um, I hope you and your family are going to have a really nice Christmas and are prepared for like a really nice Christmas. I'm kind of looking forward to the, to, to Christmas and New Year's this year. Um, and I really want to thank you, Bobby, for being on the show, giving us an education of what we, what we should and should not do with our sewers and our drains. And, um, and your, what was it, Bio? Bio One. Bio One. Okay. I'm going to have to look that up because that's always a good thing to have. And also the thing, you don't put down the, to clear uh, clog would be like the Drano. Um, what's the other Liquid one? Plumber, Drano. Uh, anything that lie. has acid in it. Acid and lye? Because I remember someone told me don't put that because that's Yeah, lye. there's also a product called Mule Kick that people put down their drains, which is pretty much straight acid. That is not good for the pipe. Because it basically eats through the walls of the pipes and shortens the life of the sewer line. Okay. So um, we should all check out the Bio One. I know I definitely am because it's kind of something good to have to just keep your drains clear. And um, I mean, I learned about the soap. I didn't realize that the soap will eventually... Can, can also clog up. Um, yes, I look on people's faces when we tell them that soap is grease is, is funny. People sometimes, don't realize that. Sometimes I water mine down, especially the dog. I water mine down. Because yeah. <laughs> you spend more time rinsing off that sponge. <laughs> you know, you kind right. of always water it. So I usually water it down a little bit and then um, use it. For the suds water. that's at the end of the night when you're washing dishes, the suds is what actually turns into the grease. Um, so that's why we tell people flush it. Let your water one, two to three minutes so you can make sure you force everything through. That 
is okay. That's really a that to me was mind learning lesson. Was you know, and I figured, oh, I'm okay with Don. Don's supposed to be good, <laughs> but no, not always that good. Yes. Still, still yes. has that property. That's good. I mean, this was a really good learning experience. So, um, thank you, Bobby, for uh, um, being on the show with me today and um, sharing our sharing your knowledge about um, our sewers and our water pipes. Um, and make sure that they're all maintained well and bio one. So everybody make sure you go to Pacific Drain Services.com. Pacific Drain Service.com. Okay. And look up bio one. Um, yes. so Bobby, thank you so much. And um, you're welcome. And I really want to thank Brian for also uh, introducing us um, so that we can do this. This was a really good education for me. I can tell you that. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the future again. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.